Well, this is something a little bit different. Um, <clears throat> this is a little video on um, a workshop project that I'm cur currently engaged in um, to make a tool for my workshop, specifically for my Craftsman drill press. <clears throat> now this is, or it will be when it's finished, <coughs> excuse me, there's a lot more work still to be done on it yet. Um, this is a float lock vise. Now, you probably, like me, never even heard of one of these. <clears throat> I certainly hadn't. And then um, I was watching a video of one of my favourite YouTubers, um, Mr. Pete222, a.k.a. Tubal Kane, a.k.a. Lyle Peterson, who picked one of these up at a tool auction. He did a little video on it and he was talking about it and uh, he said they used to use these a lot in uh, his high school where he was a shop teacher because they are uh, they're a, a very safe vice to use on, on, on a drill press. Um, and I was fascinated by this and I thought it was an absolutely brilliant idea. Uh, and I, like many other subscribers to his channel, hoped he would do a series of videos showing you how to make one. And he has done exactly that. So I'm not going to tell you how to make this because it would be a complete waste of time. He's much, much better at this sort of thing than I am. And he's done a whole series of videos showing you exactly how to, to, to make one of these. And I'm part the way through it. I haven't finished it yet. As I said, there's quite a little bit more to make. But the reason I thought I'd do this video is that um, Lyle's got a fully equipped machine shop. I mean, it's I'm massively envious. I'd love to have all the tooling that he has. And he used a milling machine and a, and a, and a shaper, amongst other tools, to, to make his version of this. But I was convinced that I could do it with just my Warco uh, WM180 lathe, which is hiding away there, right in behind to the actual float lock vise, um, and my drill press. Um, so uh, I just thought that if any of you guys want to, wanted to, to make one of these, go and watch Lyle's videos. But as I said, you can very definitely do a lot of the work on a lathe and a drill press. I did all the drilling uh, and tapping on my uh, Craftsman drill press without a problem and the reaming because the, the hole for the slide bar has to be reamed half inch. Um, I made a jig up basically out of a bit of angle iron which I could bolt to the tool post to mount these bits of uh, steel to uh, and then put a milling cutter in the lathe and cut these angles, or milled off these angles. Um, so yeah, you, you don't absolutely need a milling machine to do this, although obviously it makes life a hell of a lot easier if you have got one, but you can do it without. The other thing I wanted to say was, so far all of the parts, all of the materials I've used on this are just are available from eBay and they're not expensive. So um, yeah, um, I, I haven't come across anything yet I couldn't do with the equipment I've got but ho and hopefully I won't I, I, I know what's involved with the rest of it so um, well we'll see but anyway that's it for now now I did say that I wasn't going to show you how I made the float look rice because obviously you can see Mr Pete's series of videos on that and they are just superb but I thought you might be interested in how I get over um, some of the problems in making something like this when I don't have a milling machine. I also don't have a vertical milling slide for my lathe. So <clears throat> what we've got here, this setup, as you can probably see, this is a nice meaty angle plate, which I've um, um, counterboard the base of it so that I can actually bolt it to my tool post. So I can move it back and forth on the cross slide. We've got a, a 90 degree um, angled milling cutter in the uh, chuck and I can wind the work back and forth across the, the cutter and therefore that allows me to mill the um, V-shaped v -shaped slot in the uh, jaw of the float lock vise. So, um, well, let's uh, put some <clears throat> gloop on it and um, give it a go. Now I'm only going to take small cuts because um, the work is not as rigid as I would like. So there is a bit of chatter, as you can hear. Oh, 
obviously on a mill you'd be able to uh, fix this down far more rigidly than I can on the lathe but it works and you get a very nice cut and uh, as long as you just take small cuts I'm, I'm not taking very large cuts at all and feed the work in slowly This will produce a perfectly acceptable V-shaped slot in the jaw, which is exactly what we want. Well, the next operation in making this float lock vise is to make uh, the end spacer, which goes on the other end of the two rods. Um, now, Mr. Pete uh, marked his out, drilled it on the drill press, which is what I've done. And then this excess material on either side, because it's shaped this end piece, um, he cut those, uh, the waste stock off using his bandsaw and then he shaped it and cleaned it up using his um, belt sander. Now, I've got a metal cutting bandsaw, it's the Aldi one, which I'm very pleased with, but unfortunately, um, it's very difficult to cut anything at an angle on that. So I've opted to use the lathe as a mill to mill off this excess stock. Now, it's quite convenient in the fact that um, the, the small piece of work that we're making this base route of actually fits quite happily in my um, tool post. So I've spaced out with some shims to, to get at the right height for the milling cutter. Um, and um, I will uh, basically mill off the excess stock and it will also provide quite a nice finish too. Um, so uh, that's what we're gonna do here. So I'll just put some, let's put some glue on it. There we go. Uh, start, start the mill again. Not forgetting our safety glasses, very important. Put a small, small cut on. Again, just like when I was um, doing this operation on the jaws, you only take small cuts doing it this way, and it will take some time, but there's not an awful lot of metal to come off. Um, and uh, it will, it, this will get through it fairly, you know, fairly quickly. pass. Anyway, there you go. Very simple. Clamped in the tool post. Set the compound slide to the angle you want to take the material off and um, yeah, that'll make a damn good job of it. All right, well, I've uh, finished working on the spacer on the lathe, and uh, you can see the finished results. It's done a really nice job of removing the uh, excess metal off of the sides there. Um, I've started to shape the end here um, on the belt sander, and um, now we need to cut it off across here and then do the final shaping. And that will be done on the belt sander.